as the weather in Pittsburgh has finally cooled, as we're now in winter, we're getting winter weather. There was snow the other day here in Pittsburgh. The drama around the Pittsburgh Steelers has also finally cooled. And I don't know how long that's going to last. Enjoy it while you can. Because there's some calm before the storm. There's some rumblings that this may erupt again. And anyone who's too excited that this may be tempered, that oh, all is well around the Pittsburgh Steelers, I highly doubt you're going to be happy for too long. This is another episode of Mike Drop here on Pittsburgh Sports Live, coming at you from the Beaver County Auto Studios up above Market Square here in downtown Pittsburgh, and while many on the Pittsburgh Steelers, many key players, here we did an article for SteelersNow.com, the new venture in the Pittsburgh Sports Now family. There it is, Steelers Pro Bowl players, we want Antonio Brown to stay. SteelersNow.com, you can read that in the rest of our gems on SteelersNow.com. Also find that at PGH Steelers Now on Twitter. All our articles are linked there. But while many of you might get excited and, okay, it's going to calm down. There was just drama because they were disappointing throughout the regular season. They missed the playoffs. No big deal. Many of the Steelers want Antonio Brown back. It'll all go away. Not so fast. Because like, I've got a little toy here in the studio. You can kind of see that here. I don't have a picture. But see if you can move. Maybe got to move the, move the MacBook here. Here we go. This probably was better in my head, to be honest. Yeah, that didn't really work. But oh well. The idea was there because where I was going with that, the Steelers and Art Rooney II, they're still going to run away from Antonio Brown when they can. And while it's wonderful that many of the Steelers may want Antonio Brown back, we've heard from Juju Smith-Schuster, his wide receiver counterpart, that he wants Antonio Brown to be a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though he replaced them in the Pro Bowl, even though many think he could be the future of the Steelers now, even though he could be a number one on most other teams, and his emergence is profound in his two years in the National Football League, and he had a better year than A.B., was team MVP. And granted, A.B. had a fantastic season, even missing the last game of the year. A.B. had an historic year. A.B. had a year that only Randy Moss and five of the guys have ever had in the National Football League with 1,200-plus yards, 100-plus catches, and 15-plus touchdowns. But Juju did even more. And he's younger. But... That doesn't matter as much as the comments from one guy, and this is where I'm going to continue to point to. Art Rooney II said in in an interview with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and got to give them their due, a few weeks back during the height of the drama, when I was churning shows here for Pittsburgh Sports Live all about the drama, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette got an interview with Art Rooney II. Everyone wanted to hear from him because we heard from Mike Tomlin. I was at the end of the season press conference. We heard from Mike Tomlin. We heard from even many of the players at that point, but they also kind of danced around it. Big Ben was kind of quiet then. We heard all the drama throughout the season. Everybody was well aware of what was going on in Week 17 and no communication with Antonio Brown. But Art Rooney II, in that interview, said something that I can't move off of. I can't care about this. Here's an example. Joe Hayden on IG, Instagram, throwing it up, was understood, doesn't need to be explained in quotes there, talking about Antonio Brown, there's a picture of him in AB, love you brother, you the goat, you know AB loves that, the stroke of the ego, he has a goat ring for greatest of all time, and he's on his way, one of the greatest receivers ever, certainly he's a legendary, legendary receiver in the history of the game for what he's done the past decade. And that is saying something with how many great receivers there have been in the National Football League's history. We got business to handle year 10. He wants A.B. back. He wants A.B. back for year 10. That would be A.B.'s 10th for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously not for Joe Hayden, but they got business to take care of. 
They still have unfinished business to take care of because they have not won that championship. They've not even reached the Super Bowl together. A.B. has never won a ring, appeared in that first Super Bowl in his second year when the Steelers lost to Green Bay when he wasn't a premier wide receiver at that point either and has yet to get to a second. Joe Hayden has never even been in the playoffs until being a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers and disappointed last year in the second round, and then this year they disappointed and didn't even get there after rescuing him from Cleveland. So I get it, Joe Hayden. You want A.B. back? Sure. I even believe Ben does, even though there's been subtle comments between the two of them, even though A.B., I'm sure, is frustrated Ben for saying he should have thrown a juju every down in a game this year. Despite all the drama and subtle jabs and the rumors of A.B. throwing the ball at Ben's feet, Ben's a Hall of Famer. He's not going anywhere. This is his team, whether you like it or not, and many reports are that a lot of the players don't. But, oh, well, he's not going anywhere. Whether that's true or not, it's irrelevant. He's a future Hall of Famer. He threw for the most yards and touchdowns of his career this past year. I know all the interceptions are there, and certainly he's not played perfect football, and I would love him to be better. And he did lose them some games this year, even though he also won them some. But he's not going anywhere until he retires. And he'd be worse off when he does for a few years. That's a fact, too. And the Steelers know that. It, the quarterback's the more important position. is a less replaceable position. That's why they put up with his crap more than, say, an Antonio Bryant or a Le'Veon Bell. But I still think a, Ben would want A.B. He wants as many weapons as he can get. He wants the best receiver in football on his team. And he wants to throw all those yards and touchdowns to A.B. like they did this past season, like they've done for a decade together in the National Football League. He wants A.B. and Juju. He doesn't just want one. I'm sure Juju even wants A.B. back as well. Because Juju understands in his few years in the National Football League that A.B. being there makes him better. It allows him to have more opportunities. It spaces the field for him. It provides single man on Juju because double, if not triple, coverage is over there with Antonio Brown. And... I believe all of that. I believe Pouncey. I believe members of the defense. I believe everybody in that building, from the PR staff all the way on, wants Antonio Brown there because they have a better chance of winning that elusive championship, that that second ring for Tomlin. I'm I'm sure Tomlin wants him back, too. He's a great player. Even though Tomlin was clearly fed up with his crap and with much of the drama based on how Tomlin handled himself in press conferences this year, especially the the end-of-the-season press conference. I believe everybody wants him back, but I also, as I said to open the show, I believe none of it matters because I believe Art Rooney II doesn't. I believe Art Rooney II made that clear. He didn't evidently say we're going to get rid of Antonio Brown come hell or high water. No, he didn't say that. But he did hint at it in a way if you read through between the lines and if you're intelligent and you can kind of maybe read some body language he obviously made it clear they're not going to release ab and that makes sense they're not going to get nothing for the best receiver in football and let him control his destination of course not but he also made one poignant comment that i brought on in past brought up in past shows and i'm sure you've heard before that he cannot envision a scenario where Antonio Brown is a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers come training camp. I'll repeat myself. Art Rooney II said he cannot envision a scenario where Antonio Brown is a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers come training camp. Once I heard that comment, that actually triggered this show. There it is. One of the most recent ones. Mic drop. SteelersNow.com. Also, of course, available on Pittsburgh Sports Live. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and Made possible thanks to Beaver County Auto here in the Beaver County Auto Studios. But there's a picture of myself ranting and raving and preaching the Holy Gospel, according to Mike Oste. The one I read, which maybe you should listen to more. Mike drop possible destinations for Antonio Brown. I went through 1-19 to because the Steelers are drafting at slot 20 for the upcoming NFL draft. It's going to take a first-round draft pick. There are many teams that certainly will be interested. There are teams that he maybe would be interested in as well that maybe maybe would or maybe would not fit. We know he's made comments, or at least the rumors are he's made comments with Jerry Rice about wanting to be a Niner in San Francisco, wanting to replace the GOAT there and take over 
as he feels he's now the new GOAT. But they're the number two overall pick. If they trade that, I'm sure the Steelers would love to be interested. That's the other conference. That's a great draft pick. If they're not willing to trade that, I doubt it's going to happen. Their second-round slot's not, en- not enough. It's not attractive enough. It's going to have to be a first-round draft pick. Carolina has been brought up because of the fit and what Cam Newton really needs to help him with another premier wide receiver. But now there's reports that Cam Newton may actually miss time next year, that maybe he's not fully healthy, that maybe he might even sit out the year. That's actually been brought up by the new owner of the Panthers as not a completely out of the question, not eliminating that possibility, comparing the situation to Andrew Luck, who sat out a year, got healthier, and once again became an all-pro and an MVP candidate. It might actually work. It might be fine for Cam Newton because I've been heavily critical of him as being overrated for having down year after down year and having a completion percentage continually under 60% through most of his years in his NFL career after that MVP season, of course, and clinging on Christian McCaffrey to basically do everything for him. When he does complete a pass, it's to Christian McCaffrey and nobody else, really. Loses Coach and Benjamin. They haven't replaced that production. Greg Olson is always hurt. When you have a quarterback that's not accurate, that is fading, that may not even be healthy, even when he's incredibly athletic and formerly a great player. Another great player like Antonio Brown, who is still producing at a great clip, would absolutely be a help to Cam, to Cam Newton and the Panthers. They might be able to get back in the Super Bowl with A.B. A- but he could be a difference maker. But they draft right in front of the Steelers. I believe it's at 16 off the top of my head. It's not going to work. It's not enough of a jump. So it's going to be hard. But that would be a great fit there. The Packers have been brought up. The Dolphins have been brought up. Listen to the show. Watch the show. It's all there. It's all there. I go through 1 to 20. And while there are teams go- that are going to be interested, I don't believe that, that some are spewing, some media members in this town, that maybe his, his value's down or there won't be interest because of the drama. There will always be at least one team, if not two, three, four, or five, that'll be interested in the best receiver in football, even with drama. There were teams that were interested in T.O. after he was team obliterator and got kicked off team after team. There were teams interested in Randy Moss. Maybe not every team in the league, and maybe some tried to lowball, but eventually there were teams that were interested in Randy Moss every single time he acted up. They knew how, how great of a receiver he was. Same with Ocho Cinco, even. Eventually that wore thin, but those type of personalities eventually found a home, and they also had their problems later in their career, if it's Moss and Ocho Cinco, T.O. early on. It's a similar comparison here to A.B. But when you're the greatest receiver in the game, Julio Jones would act up. I'm sure somebody else would want him too because of his production. And there's going to be teams interested. There's going to be teams interested. There might even be a team like the Niners who feel like they can win in a hurry. They feel like they have Richard Sherman they brought in. They feel like they disappointed the last two years. They feel like that if Garoppolo was healthy, they would have been a playoff team even though they were far away. They feel like they were a little bit more competitive than some people would have thought with continual backup quarterbacks. Maybe a weapon could help Garoppolo when he actually gets in there to be a starter what they're paying him to do or whoever is their quarterback. They feel like maybe they're one playmaker away, even though obviously the Rams are the toast of that division. But who knows? They would need to give up the number two overall draft pick. So that's not an issue, though. There's going to be teams interested, whether the Niners want to give up the draft pick or not. There's going to be teams interested. And they may not even want to do it AB once. So they may not even send them there if that is truthful, even if they were willing. But I'm sure they would if it's the number two overall draft pick. But Art Rooney II made it clear regardless. Now, since we all agree there's going to be a team interested, put that to bed. Separate from now knowing somebody would be interested and knowing you're going to be having a chance at getting some value and the cap hit, which many capologists out there can explain, wouldn't be as bad as many initially thought. So this trade is possible. It can happen. I've said in the past, and I still believe this, it should happen. It must happen almost. Because I'm fed up with his crap. Tomlin's fed up. The team's fed up. It's just too much drama. It's too much me first and too much drama. And if you're not going to make the playoffs with them, and they didn't even get past the second round last year with them, even when they were a 13-win team, and we didn't hear as much about A-B drama last year, of course, when they were winning, and you hear more about it when you're losing, I agree, but they're coming off a losing season. And with all this talent, if you keep disappointing, something's got to break up. Le'Veon Bell, A-B, all this drama... 
They kind of replaced Le'Veon Bell, at least with James Conner, when he's healthy. We'll see what happens next year. I'm sure they're still going to draft a running back for security, maybe bring in a veteran, although I doubt it. But with Juju's emergence, you have a replacement, and Ben loves James Washington. He always tells me that. He tells everybody that. So maybe he could fit in, fill in, and get some production. No one will be A.B., but I think now it's time to, to cut bait. This is when his value is still there. This is the time. And I don't think Art Rooney II is going to be embarrassed by not doing so. When he knows what he's saying, he's very, cal- very calculated. He would not come out there and say, that I can't envision a scenario with Antonio Brown in training camp if he wanted to keep him. Because he hasn't heard from him yet since week 17, since before the game. Mike Tomlin hasn't heard from him since before the game. Nobody else in the Steelers have. Juju tweeted just the other day, I believe. I read something to the effect of, maybe it was on Instagram, but something to the effect of, I tried to reach out to him, we're brothers, I want him back, but he still hasn't gotten in touch with me. I feel like we'll talk soon. I don't know. How do you think that, Juju? You're pretty optimistic. That's glass half full. You're going to assume you're going to talk to a guy that's been ghosting you and ignoring you for now over a month. Same thing doing with everybody else. He's talked with former Steelers who the team doesn't even love that much anymore and James Harrison and a few others. That may not excite Art Rooney II and that type of management brass based on what they just dealt with with James Harrison. And I gave my opinions there. I don't. I think James Harrison kind of got a little bit of a bad rap because they weren't, they weren't really utilizing him. But he ran out of town and played for the hated rival that's back in a Super Bowl and that always beat them. So I get it being annoying that A.B. would speak to James Harrison and nobody on the current Pittsburgh Steelers. So he's not talking to anybody. And Art Rooney II made it clear that he can't envision a scenario. There's going to be teams interested. I go through it in a past show. Here it is again, SteelersNow.com, mic drop, possible destinations for Antonio Brown. Go there, watch it, soak it in. Go all the way 1-20, to Steelers are the 20th pick, 1-19 to in the NFL draft teams, whether they would be viable, whether they would make sense or not. And really... Obviously, they're not going to get ripped off. They're not stupid. (laughs) Even though some of you may think so at times. They're not stupid. They're a wildly successful franchise. They're not the Patriots in the last 15 years. But still, they're not dumb at all. But they're not going to make a comment. Or Rooney II's not going to make a comment because he's all that matters. I'm sure he may listen to some of these players, and maybe they're going to him and saying, hey, we'll fix this. Why don't we win a championship? But he's not going to be embarrassed. Once he makes that definitive comment, I can't envision a scenario. Once we know there are going to be teams interested. Once the fact that he hasn't contacted Art Rooney the second still, who did pay him, unlike Le'Veon Bell, who arguably has more of a gripe, you know it's over. I still stand pat. Antonio Brown won't be back with his team next year. None of this conversation between key players on the Steelers. None of this. Still as Pro Bowl players, we want Antonio Brown to stay. None of that matters to me. It's all fodder. It's all a smokescreen. And I believe them. They do want him back, I'm sure. But I'm sure there are some that are sick of him. I'm sure it's a divided locker room. It has to be. Because those players maybe forget this because they want to win and have a great player back. But he quit on them. He quit on them. In week 17, he left the game at halftime, didn't get the MRI, different home, all misreports, his agents calling Tomlin, shows up there in a mink coat. He quit on those players that may or may not want him back. So we'll see. But if I got to throw a, a Vegas line, a money line down on this, if I got to do the gambling man, like Anthony here at Pittsburgh Sports Live, which you can. Go watch his show, his new show, one of our new shows here, premiering. Well, it's been premiered, but premiering occasionally here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. I'm leaning on A.B. not being back. All I needed to hear is from Art Rooney II. That's enough for me. It really is. that that, that They can voice their opinions, but Art Rooney II is not going to be treated like crap, for lack of a better phrase again. He's not going to be ghosted. This isn't a teenage relationship. He's not going to be ignored. He's not going to be disrespected. 
there it is. He's not going to be disrespected. We've seen it time and time again. A Super Bowl MVP like Antonio Holmes cut bait with. He's not afraid. Not afraid. And there's just no way, despite all the conversation, all these key players that want him back and are keep keep putting it on social media that they want him around, they want him back with the Steelers. I don't care if Ben screams from the rooftops, and that's probably the only person they would really listen to because he's the quarterback, he's a Hall of Famer, and he does have the most clout there, like it or not. I still think they're not going to do it. I still think that Mike Tomlin and Ben maybe could convince Art Rooney II, but it's doubtful because Art Rooney II, here's the only way Antonio Brown's back. I'll close the show with this. Here's the only way, only way I can envision that scenario. And I don't predict this. Antonio Brown, an incredibly immature human being, based on what we've seen, I'm call a spade a spade, that's fair, right? Would have to apologize, would have to make the first move and contact Art Rooney the second. Even if he does it privately and doesn't want to talk to Ben or Tomlin, he's going to have to pick up the phone somehow or throw a carrier pigeon or a DM or something, throw an email in for old school, and contact Art Rooney the second. And maybe not grovel, but say, I'm sorry, this is what happened, here are my feelings, here's the conversation we should have had months ago that Arun the Second says he wish they would have had and would have been the professional and mature thing to do. Let's clear it up. I'd like to be back. I want to help win that championship, the second under the Tomlin era, and my first ring that I don't yet have. And I know the grass might not be greener elsewhere, and you did pay me the money, unlike Le'Veon. I'd like to be here. I'd like to be the face of the franchise. I'd like for business to keep on booming with me and the Pittsburgh Steelers here at Heinz Field. If that happens, maybe Art Rooney II, especially with Ben and Tomlin probably wanting him back and all these players speaking out, then he could listen. But as we still stand, Antonio Brown is off the grid. Or he's very much on the grid. He's in Miami. You can see it on his Snapchat. And every now and then posts on IG and Twitter. But he's off the grid where they're concerned because they haven't heard from him. So when he stops ghosting them, especially the owner, the distinguished owner coming from maybe the richest NFL family ever, and I mean that about success and history, not necessarily money, but they got some too. When he stops feeling disrespected and there's some type of apology and A.B. reaches out, because I don't think Art Rooney II is going to reach out to him. I think Art Rooney II's mind has been made up, but if A.B. reaches out to him, he maybe could fix this based on everything the teammates have said, the key players and the pro bowlers. Based on Ben and Joe Hayden and Pouncey and Juju, they want him back. He'll then listen to them after Antonio Brown contacts him, after there's a conversation between Arun the second and AB, and after there's somewhat of, I want to stay here, I want to give an apology. If none of that happens, which I doubt is going to happen, I'm basically betting that that won't happen from what I know of Antonio Brown and what all of you are seeing recently publicly, then I don't see how he's back. Art Rooney II's comments carry much more weight than anything any players on this team have to say. Period. End of story. Now, kind of close this with two things here. Number one, Check that out. We've got a new thing for the studio. I brought this up on a past show. I know Dan's probably brought this up as well. Bam Morris. We're going to go with Bam Morris. We threw it on Twitter. That was the guess. I feel like there's a B there. I feel like it's 33. We're going to go Bam Morris. 95 AFC Championship pennant. I'm going to say Bam Morris. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Oh, well. We got it on the studio. I'm calling it Bam Morris. For an asinine autograph that I could have that I found in my mom's basement, I'm going to be very pleased that that's Bam Morris and just in my mind say it's Bam Morris until I'm proven otherwise. And also, click subscribe. But if you haven't, you're behind because now we've reached a plateau. We've reached a milestone. We now are well over, and it's well over by the time I record this, well over 1,000 subscribers. So we're, we're clicking on all cylinders. A lot of our competitors in terms of past outlets that I've worked for, including one main one that I ran the radio side of that major outlet here in Pittsburgh for, for three years all over social media that we did well there were views there i had success i was credentialed i spoke with a lot and did a, did tons of interviews there i'm not going to rag on my time there it did wonders for my personal career and i won't drop the name but it's obvious if you search me search my bio or even go to my twitter bio 
I covered the Steelers there even a year ago. But when they dabbled on in YouTube, didn't do as well as we're doing so far. Our other main competitor, who again I won't name, when he's dabbled in YouTube and they've tried their own outlet in terms of a radio side, it's not worked out. They've not got as many subscribers, as many views, as much attention, and done as well as us. So brushing my shoulders off, and I'll brush all the shoulders off for Mike Fakovacan, Alan Saunders, Dan Kangursky, myself, in terms of the, uh, the mothership there, in terms of the, the, core, the, core, the core four of Pittsburgh Sports Live, would be myself, Dan, Alan, and Mike. And the rest, the um, other hosts that we've dabbled on and different featured programs. All of us deserve that pat in the back for over the over 1,000 subscribers, the amount of views we're now clicking. And it's really not just us, though. The pat in the back should also go to you guys. I like to be sarcastic and say that, you know, the honor is all yours and be funny with it. But in all honesty, it does allow us to keep doing this. It makes it us easier to do this. It's it part of our career now. It, it was a little bit of a risky scenario initially to even go about this venture, but it, it's exceeded my expectations to this point inside six months and be over a thousand subscriptions to keep on going with that. So if you haven't yet, you're watching this at least, clip subscribe, click subscribe on the subscribe button there on the YouTube channel. We have Penguins Live Chance. We have Pittsburgh Hockey Now. All the Penguins coverage is there. We have Pittsburgh Sports Now, the main mothership, the initial driver of this force from years ago, covering Pitt, covering all the high schools, Pitt basketball. <laughs> Jay-Z goes to their games now, so that's something. I got Steelers Now. Mike's as well involved. Steelersnow.com, the new venture here. There's even Pittsburgh hockey. There's even Pittsburgh soccer now, I'm sorry. And there will be maybe that show will be rejuvenating itself here in the future. I'll try to make that happen. There's a baseball program I'm going to do with Noah Hiles. We're going to bring that up. We've got gambling shows now. We've got the Corner Three. So we are discussing basketball, and very few outlets here in the Pittsburgh area are going to do that. I've been on that a couple times. You're going to get everything you need here for the Pittsburgh sports fan, and it won't be like it's covered to kind of flip our intro, from 1999, no, we're now in 2019. So we're going to give you 2019-style coverage and modernize things as it should be, not the 1999, 1998, 2018, none of that covered. So click subscribe. Click on the subscribe button. Make it easier for us to get the content to you, the golden quality content here at Pittsburgh Sports Live. Go to our websites, Pittsburgh Soccer Now, Pittsburgh Hockey Now, Pittsburgh Sports Now, and Steelers Now. Dot com. Follow us on Twitter at PGH Sports Live on Twitter. And follow myself at Mike Osti 11 So this didn't really work out. I'm going to try one more time here. Okay, that was a little bit better. A little bit better there. And as uh, the little toy there tries to conquer his march, maybe running away, just like the Steelers are going to do from Antonio Brown, or at least Art Rooney II is going to do from A.B., when he can. We here at Pittsburgh Sports Live will keep on conquering sports radio, but really Pittsburgh sports, maybe in general, sports media, one day at a time. <laughs>